What is up and welcome back. This is part three of the Lexus stereo system build. If you missed any previous parts, I'm gonna get them to pop up right over here and that'll get you caught up to speed. If you like this content and if you like this channel, please hit the like button and please subscribe. In the last episode, we left off with getting the speaker box all wrapped up. And in this episode, we got some wiring and a whole bunch of other cool stuff going on. So let's get to So I decided it was time to tear into amp wiring. Got all these black pieces here, had like this surround fancy thing so you can't find anything and stuff. Had to get that stuff out of the way. And honestly, I am good with this wire that they used here on their hot. That's some decent wire. Um, really no different than what I would put in there anyway. So I'm not gonna change this wire headed back. However, all their ends that they just like hammer crimpered down on there, I'm not digging those. So I am gonna redo all the ends on all the wire, which means starting from here, and then this one, and if, I may just have to make a new one if some of these at the end past this are too short. I'm just not replacing the wire basically from the fuse to the back of the car because basically it's the same wire I'm gonna use. However, the ground wire and this big three still all needs updated, which I, I assumed it was gonna no biggie. So big three is what everybody calls it, big five, big 29, whatever you wanna call it. It is what it is. You're taking a big old zero gauge running from your hot post here to the hot post on the alternator, which is here. So we'll have one wire, zoop, zoop, loop to here. And then the ground, you got to have a big fatty on it too, because if you look from the factory, you got these two skinny little wires grounding this battery. So that really defeats the purpose of your zero gauge back here. And same with your hot, you know, you can put a big zero gauge wire running back there, but it's useless because this little fella here is what it's all coming back to. That's where your power comes from is the alternator. So... We're gonna be zero gauging alternator to hot and then ground to a chassis ground. We may just come up here somewhere on this front end, probably core support. Um, and then we're gonna to have to do a second one basically to ground so that the alternator has a good ground, which is grounded to the block. So we're probably gonna take like one of these bolts here and run a ground strap. See, here's a factory ground strap. Basically, we're going to upgrade this tiny little ground strap. We're going to leave it sit there, but we'll run us a new one, probably from that big bolt on the chassis to one of these big motor mount bolts on the engine here. And that's going to give us our one, two, triple link there to ground everything down. So we'll try and knock that out real quick. And I don't know, you know, there's plenty to do, guys. There's just plenty to do. Look at this, what is this? Somebody just folded that around, you see? That ain't the way to do that. So I'm gonna redo this one. I don't even think I'm gonna reuse the wire. I'm gonna just make a new piece of wire and all.
All right, got the hots done. I think it's time to get some dinner. I just heard some pizza pull up, I think, so I'm gonna get a bite to eat, and then hopefully come back and jam some grounds on this thing. What do we got? One hoopty whoopty there, and one hoopty whoopty there, so two little ground straps on there, and I think this under the hood stuff's gonna be taken care of. All right, we got our big three. Ding, ding, three. Big three, big 17, big 39, whatever you wanna call it. Got your, let's get right in here. This wire here is upgrading the engine to the chassis ground. You see it snaking, snaking. Engine to chassis ground, check. Battery to chassis ground, check. And on both of these, as you can see, we scratched her down to bare metal on both these grounds right here. And that one right there was a nice shiny chunk of aluminum underneath that black bracket. And I got it pinched underneath the bracket, not on top of it. So it's dead against the aluminum block right there. So there we are in our hots. I did replace from the fuse block to the battery because I didn't like the crimped ends on it that somebody mashed over. And this is our charge wire upgraded. Let's see if we can get that uh, little rubber booty boot back on here. There we go. Got our little booty boot back on there. So upgraded charge wire from the alternator to the battery. So anytime you're doing an amp install with a big ass ground wire like this and a big ass hot wire like that, if you're not grounding, if you're just grounding to the chassis, you saw what's grounding your battery is little bitty old wires like this one right here. All right, you're not gonna be able to ground 2000 watts of power through little grounds like this right here. So you gotta upgrade that ground strap right there and then all the way back to the battery right here because if you look on the back side of this battery it's got those little wires all the way up to the battery I don't know if you can see them there but right somewhere there is two little wires coming off of this post right here and same with the hot you're not going to be able to pull you can try to pull all that juice out of the battery you want to but it's never going to have a chance of keeping that thing charged with that tiny little wire that ha that the factory puts coming off of these is not designed to try to pull thousands of watts through. So that's why you got to upgrade this area here. Our wire headed back is looking good, so I think that's got us wrapped up under the hood. I'm not going to put all of these black trimmy pieces back on yet because we'll have to put the fuse in when we get done. Make sure everything's nice before we put that on make sure everything's working good and everything you know we don't have to mess with it no more before we cover it all back up with those trim pieces but like I said for now I'm gonna call it a night clean up a little bit in here grab me one of these golden coldens right here booyah decided to do a little modification to this here this is the back dash piece the little 8 inch whatever size subwoofer that is was in behind this. You can see that there is some, there you go, some airflow is gonna get through there, but I do wanna maximize it. Um, there is some more perforation in the back dash that could let this system breathe more through this if the plastic weren't hindering it. If, you, if this came with tweeters, it would have had two more holes cut in it here and here, but this car didn't have that feature, so I've got this little grill piece out and I think I can get it apart. This kind of uh, speaker mesh screen right here, it's just kind of glued on and it seems like pretty good screen. It doesn't seem like it's going to fall apart. So I'm just going to try to hopefully peel it off. I might be able to reuse it. I may have to put something different over this. We'll just see when we go to reassembly. Just kind of see where it goes. But uh, for now, I'm just going to try and gently take it off and uh, and see where it goes. Then what I'm gonna do is perforate this some more. I don't wanna get rid of too much of the structure because I don't, it's got kind of a little 
dome to it that I want to be able to keep so it looks good in there. I don't want it just all flat and floppity. So some of this structure I'm going to try to keep, but I do want to perforate it as much as uh, I feel like I can without it getting too goofy goo. like that. I wonder if I could die. I don't know. Flat side that way. Set it right here. Alright, now see how much modification we can do to this. Drill some holes, cut some areas. I don't know. We may get the Dremel out and just maybe do some slots in it. I don't know. Take a gander at it. Do some brainstorming. breathe a little bit more. We'll clean it up a little bit and we're going to stick this same uh, speaker screen back on it here hopefully and hopefully it goes over pretty good. I got the same spray glue. Looks like that's what they was using at the factory too. Some spray glue so shouldn't be a big deal to uh, put some spray glue on this and slap that piece right back on there. this joker reinstalled into the back dash piece I got some five minute epoxy on these little deals here it's kind of they kind of melt the plastic um, to make it have its own kind of retainer into this little cardboard fiber piece here so I redid it with some epoxy got it stuck in there probably better than the factory was it's some five minute epoxy so I'm gonna let that set a few minutes and then we can drop it back into the back dash Probably look pretty factory. Then we got, let's see, I think we can put the back seat back in after that. And these little C pillar panels. I think we can reassemble all this stuff here once that sets up. And then, I don't know what. I keep saying door panels are coming off. They are gonna have to come off. Um, for some reason, I'm procrastinating that one. So I'll probably have to tear into that next. I'm going to let that set up just a minute, take a little break, and uh, get this all reassembled. Well, I was waiting on the epoxy to dry. I decided to test out the LED lights hooked up to the trunk light. Oh, yeah, check them out. I got these little LEDs kind of rigged up, just kind of hooked up on the light right here. Uh, where did the remote go? Hold on. Oh, here it is. I think they're going to do pretty good. They got some kind of, uh, there's your red. I always like the red. So it's got four little lights in the kit. You can make them do a bunch of stuff. One of them is supposed to go with the music. Oh, yeah, yeah. So we'll see what that does. So I'm going to try to get these mounted to a little board in here, make some stuff light up. I think they are going to work, and they should. Let's see if this is going to work. It should turn off when I do this. Let's try and close it and peek in the ski hole. 
Oh no, because the door is open. No, it did go for the trunk too. That's cool. I was afraid it was going to go with all the doors. That's cool. So as soon as I hit this button... They're going to come on. I mean... I mean, I'll be damned. I mean... That's what I'm talking about right there. So I had them to green. They blinked a little and went back to green. That's pretty cool, though. We'll be able to do something with those. There you are. Back seat's all back in. With the back dash. Get some light. 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 There we go. Ugh. There you are. So you can see the amount of air. If we get this under here, I think you'll be able to see. Yeah. Some of them. Move that light around, you'd see them more, but. Yep, 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 yep. That's going to be pretty sweet. That's going to help the sound get in to the cabin. Bounce off that back window. It's going to sound pretty good, I believe. I got these wires from the trunk extended from the light there. That's going to be our LED control there. And what else? I had to redo this ground wire. It's hard to see, but I mean, I've just been redoing all the wiring anyway, but I did keep a couple of the pieces in there just because it is good wire ain't nothing wrong with it it's just some of the ends aren't good so redid the end on that ground and then here where they're going into the amp as i expected somebody just skint down a bunch of the wire let's see there's no reducers no ends on these so somebody just skint down a bunch of the wire shoved it in there so i, I got those reducers we'll redo this when we hook the amp back up we're gonna shimmy it over this way a little bit so that the controls which are right here so that the amp controls will be easily easily accessible through this hole if i get the controls where they're right about here shimmy that amp all the way over basically and then the little control button for the leds i'll get it in there somewhere too so one more step closer I feel like it's lunchtime though. So, I'm about to take a break, get a bite to eat. Probably go to my favorite place, go get some Mexican food. And uh, come back and start on the door panels. I think I've about procrastinated all the little odd jobs I can do. Um, if ins, we had another subwoofer here today, I could get this box going, but we don't. So that's pretty much what I'm down to at the moment. Um, is door panels. Once we get the box in, we can start building the finishing, the finishing little piece there that's going to kind of cover it all up, put the LEDs and all that good stuff in it. But for now, like I said, it's time to get a bite to eat. Come back and jump on these door panels. Uh, all right, guys, lunch break's over. Back to work. I think there's about a billion screws in this thing. I know there's one that hides behind this. This piece right here is hard to pop. There it goes. There it goes. Screw hides behind here. Phillips, one hides right here. Sometimes there's a rubber mat, I think, in here, but this one here looks like somebody made it fall out. You got one here. Should be one, yep, you got one there. And I think there's one up and under this thing. I'm about to pop it off too. Let's say we try to break out these new ones. They kind of got a finer edge on them than those other blue ones I got. Let's see what you think about them. Well, man, it's break out the big boys. Maybe those things ain't all they're cracked up to be.
come on in here. Look at that. That thing's done for, son. Done for. Look at this sucker, dude. It's beat down from the feet down. No pinchy win. All right. Now we gotta see how our new ones are gonna mount into this. We may have to make something. We'll see. Let's see how it works out. This is the new kickers that come with this fancy little fellow, but uh, I that's probably not happening. They got like a rubber surround, plastic, good tweeter. And they come with, they come with a nice little pigtail to plug into the speaker. And they come with these little butt connectors, but I don't like the butt connectors. I usually just solder them to the other wire because you got to chop this thing off anyway, so. You know. This one's like made into this thing, man. Look at that. Like this whole thing is the speaker. There's no, it's all. So, I guess we cut the starfish out of there. That's gonna get us to this level here and see what we think of it. He could solder these to those and plug it right back in. Man, I've been seeing this stuff. I usually like to put a, a mat, just just like a little square foot or so of the like uh, sound mat stuff in there. It helps keep the sound in here. Helps really clarify the speakers a lot. I mean, door speakers, honestly. You know, there's nothing but sheet metal right there. But I saw this spray on Butyl, and I've just been wanting to try it out. So as long as it ain't gonna get on nothing critical, I say we'll give it a shot. How's, what's the spray pattern? Oh, okay. Spray pattern is kind of like that. Like I said, I've been wanting to try this stuff out, so we'll see what we think about it. I'm already liking it.
ready to go. This guy has some legitimate complaints. Look at that. wrap up episode three right here if you guys want to watch that last part in the mirror you'll see what it looked like putting the speakers in on the driver's side i did not record all of that because it's too redundant if anybody's got any questions anything you think i might have left out so far feel free to drop them in the comments and i'll be sure to get right back with you stay tuned for the next episode we're going to get started on that wall in the back with the leds and as always please like and subscribe